All right, parents, let's talk about spring. It is really nice outside right now, and there are lots of things you can do with your children that are spring related. So I'm gonna show, show and share some of the things that I do in my classroom that you can incorporate in your home. Um, one of the things that you can do with your children is a scavenger hunt outside. You can create something like this. If you have a printer and can print pages off the computer, um, you can find stuff like this online. Have them go outside and go for a walk and maybe look for different things that they might find in nature. You could make it like a bingo type thing and maybe something they get something if they um, get a blackout or if they get a bingo. Um, you can hide things outdoors. They can be objects that they play with on a regular basis and say, can you find all of the Mickey characters out here in the yard? Okay, something like that. Okay, so a scavenger hunt, um, finding either nature objects or hidden objects outdoors. You can also create an alphabet out of springtime things or gardening things. What I did with my classroom is I made um, different foods or things you can find in a garden that start with different letters of the alphabet. You can print these, you can make them as a, a PowerPoint slide. You can just have them look at things on the computer and just say, here are some different fruits and vegetables or plants that you might find in a garden. If you don't have any way to print, you can at least show them to them. Or if you're artistically inclined, you could draw some pictures of some fruits and vegetables. You can also talk about the differences between fruits and vegetables. So you can make a column that has fruits and a column that has vegetables. You don't have to be that artistically gifted to do this kind of stuff. I am not a good <laughs> artist when it comes to drawing, but I draw things regularly for my children and they make fun of me and that's okay. But I tell them what it is and they use their imagination even if it doesn't look like it. Another thing you can do is you can make flowers from construction paper, you can print flowers, you can put things on your flowers like different letters of the alphabet. You could put letters of their name and have them practice putting their name, the letters of their name in order. So if their name is Kason, K-A-S-O-N, and you can write their name on a piece of paper and then have them put them in order. You can also put numbers on there, one, two, three, four, five, and have them practice putting them in sequential order. You can talk about the life cycle of a butterfly. We do that a lot in the springtime here. Talk about the stages of what a caterpillar goes through before it becomes a butterfly. You can show them pictures of gardening. If you have plants or you have garden supplies and you want to plant your own plants, that's great too. Kids love interactive things like that. But if you don't have that stuff and you just want to show them pictures of kids gardening or people gardening, the different tools that they use when they garden, um, gloves and a shovel, um, what you need to plant, soil, light, uh, rain, space, things like that. You can also do things like activities with clouds. You can um, make your own clouds with cotton balls or you can print out a cloud or cut out a cloud with construction paper and then have them put cotton balls on top of it and say, I want you to count out four cotton balls and they can put four cotton balls on their clouds. You can have them sort things by spring and winter items. Which things are associated with winter and which things are spring? Of course, before this, you might want to talk to them about what things you find in winter and what things you find in spring. So in springtime, you might find flowers and rain, and you might use an umbrella. And in winter, you might find penguins, snowflakes, things like that. You can also do raindrop math. You can put little gems, you can put rocks, you can put any little objects on there to represent raindrops and have them count their raindrops in order. You don't have to print anything like this. If you don't have access, you can also just write a number line on a piece of paper, just a blank piece of paper. You can show them different pictures of things associated with spring. If you're going to print them off, I would have the 
image and the word. They may not be able to read the word, but they might, you can practice um, beginning letter sounds. What is this? It's a worm. They know it's a worm. They can say it's a wah wah worm. Worm starts with duh duh w, which makes the wah wah sound, okay? So you can practice beginning letter sounds and you can have them identify things that they might find in spring. You can also have them do things like tracing. You can print or make your own tracing sheets with a pencil on a piece of paper. You can have them trace letters. You can have them trace words associated with spring or gardening or anything like that. I did fruits and vegetables. I also have this that I found. They look like flowers, but they're different shapes, so they can practice tracing different shapes. You can make shapes, you can make these, or you can find these online and print them. All you have to do is type in something like uh, flower tracing. It's really simple. That's how I find my stuff. Um, if I'm looking for a specific thing, I will type that. Flower tracing, spring tracing sheets, stuff like that. If you're trying to figure out what, what do I even look for. Okay, here is a tracing sheet of a flower. Um, I also have I spy sheets. You can type in I spy spring items. Preschool. I would add preschool to the end. That's how I usually find a lot of things. You can have them say, if you have any dry erase markers, if you have a way to laminate, that's great. If not, I don't expect you to. You can just print this off or you can just draw some and you can say, circle all of the ladybugs. You're going to have them practicing circling or you can have them just point to them, point to the ladybugs. Then have them count how many they see. They don't have to write the numbers in the boxes. If they're able to write numbers and they're able to count, that's great. You can have them put the numbers in the boxes. If you don't have boxes to even do that, that's okay too. This is just an activity they could do, something like this. Um, watercolors are great. If you have watercolors at home, that's awesome. If you don't, you can make your own watercolors out of um, food coloring and water. You can make your own watercolors out of like blueberries or strawberry juice, um, you, which is great. In springtime, you can talk about how they produce a color. You squeeze the juice in there and you mix it with water. You can use a paintbrush. You can use um, a paper towel, a cotton ball. You can dab it on a piece of paper. If you're going to do watercolors, I pref I would... I would say the best kind of paper you can use is something like cardstock. You probably don't have watercolor paper at home, but if you have cardstock, it's better because then the um, paper won't tear as easily. Uh, we like to do a project about wind, and we take a straw and we'll put a dropper or some water watercolor on there, and we'll have them take the straw and blow, and the paint will spread around the page, and it will make it will simulate wind. Um, if you have any magazines, any anything like this, or if you have um, anyone that you know who's nearby who would be willing to drop them off at your doorstep and not come in, um, you can have them practice cutting out or identifying or pointing out all of the different plants or gardening tools or garden items, something like that. If you have any books associated with springtime or gardening. You might look through your book collection. You might be surprised. You may actually have something that's related and you didn't even realize it. You can also talk about different types of clouds. You can go outside and point out different clouds or you can just talk about how clouds have different shapes and sometimes they can look like things. Go outside, um, lay on the grass or look up at the sky and say, what clouds do you see? What does that cloud look like to you? Things like that. You can also talk about what people wear in the springtime. What are the different clothing items that you might need in the spring? A raincoat, boots, things like that. You can even have them practice putting on their different items, like a raincoat or rain boots, if you have things like that. Um, that's really good for practicing independent skills. Um, another thing you might talk about, I think I already mentioned this, but the difference between fruits and vegetables. Um, lots and lots and lots of things you can do for spring. 
Good luck, have fun, have a great time with this. Lots of outdoor things you can do, lots of indoor things. You can use chalk, I love using chalk for lots of things. You can use chalk to practice drawing flowers. You can use chalk to practice writing letters. Um, they can plant their own garden with chalk. Have them pretend like they're making seeds or sprouts. You can talk about the different parts of a plant or a flower. You don't have to get complex with it. You can just talk about how it starts as a seed. And then with the rain coming down and the sun coming out, it starts to grow into a sprout and then it comes up. You can talk about how it has leaves, it has roots. I talk about roots like they're straws that suck up the water um, and then help to get nutrients into the plant so it will grow. You can talk about how it has petals. You can talk about how there's the pollen and how um, bees pollinate and honey is made. You could make your own homemade honeycomb. I'm going to try to post a video on that later. Good luck. Have a great, great time with your children.